See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. You are to count your many blessings. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord. Oh, see what the Lord. Oh, you are to count your many. Oh, see what the Lord. Oh, see what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord. Oh, you are the count your many. Oh, see what the Lord. Oh, said he woke you up this morning. See what the Lord has done. Oh, he woke you up this morning. Oh, see what the Lord. Oh, said he woke me. Oh, see what the Lord. Oh, you are the counter. Oh, see what the Lord. Oh, said he put food on my table. See what the Lord. Oh, you know he put food on my table. See what the Lord.
watch over you all night long. Somebody ought to tell them thank you. Oh, you are the contraminy blessing. I came to count my blessing. Anybody here grateful? Oh, you are the count. One more time, you are the count. Concho. Oh, see what the Lord. somebody tell them thank you this morning come on somebody lift your hands and bless them this morning come on see what the Lord has done somebody should have been dead this morning but tell your neighbor say I made it this morning see what the Lord has done come on somebody begin to think of his goodness and count your blessings somebody tell your neighbor say see what the Lord See what the Lord has done. Amen. Let us rise. Father, Father, as we call on your name on this Mother's Day, we ask now, O oh Lord, that you just take charge of this service. Anoint it. Lord, just allow the Holy Spirit to take charge, lead God, direct us, and that all that we do be done for your glory as we praise and worship you this morning. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. We'll have our opening hymn by Mel Coolidge.
chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. And the word reads, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor heights nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, Amen. and you may be seated. I don't normally do this as we haven't had a lot of visitors, but I see a lot of strange faces in the house today. So I'm going to ask our visitors to stand just so I know who you are. I know you don't feel like you're visitor, but that's okay. If I don't know you, you're visitor. How's that? Amen. Amen. We want to just welcome all of you to the house of the Lord. I'm not going to actually say anything. I just want to just acknowledge you and let you know that we love you and want to know that you're welcome in this house. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So now we will have our offertory flash. For those who do not know, we do not do a collection in the sanctuary. You can fill out your envelope and put it in the box outside. If you have not done so, we will collect it up for you. Um, we get, do it by Givelify. You can sign on to the church webpage of Givelify and give through our Givelify system. Also, we have a cash app program that you can just give by cash app. But the idea is that we'll be able to give. The cash app number is sitting there is dollar sign NBBC 250. We are celebrating our 250th anniversary this year. So New Bethlehem Baptist Church 250 is our account number. Amen? All right. So that takes care of that. We'll move on to our few announcements that we do have today. <coughs> We do have some graduations that have already taken place to, uh, this week. Uh, Sister Ford and Sister Haywood and Brother Bennett, all of our from right here have been. They graduated so far this week in the last week. We do have some high school graduations that's coming up. Uh, we have Brother Haywood uh, Avery. He will be graduating on the 26th of May. Sister Brianna Scott is graduating on the 3rd of June. Both will be at the North Charleston Coliseum. Amen? All right. The last announcement I have for you is that there will be no Bible study until the second week of June. Second Wednesday in June is when we'll be back in the Bible study. Amen? All right. All right. We have our sick and shut in this morning. Most of you have seen this. I ask you to get your little book and put it in there so you know it. Uh, there is no changes that I see. Uh, I've been advised on. They are still the same. Keep them in prayer as we know that God is able to keep them and to heal them. Amen. All right, we have a event for men. All right, men, looking, l listen up, listen up. This is for men. This is a prostate cancer education training that will be available. We want to know how many of you might be interested, so I'm just giving it to you up front. This is my first announcement on this. I will be getting with you. I need to know if you're interested in this prostate cancer or killing the black males, and most of them don't even know they have it. This is a training session to give you the opportunity to learn about prostate cancer, uh, get treated for it, uh, get identified, know if you have it, but it is a program through Hollings Cancer Center, which is associated with MUSC, and we will do it right here at the church if the men of New Bethlehem are interested in getting that training. So this is my first announcement on it. I'll get you additional information on it. But I would recommend, I am requesting and hoping that all of our males here that's uh, 40 years of age and older are, are interested enough to come out and partake of this so they can learn. And if you think it's going to cost you, they, if you are part of this training program, they will give you a stipend to cover your cost of gas. Amen? So 
I want you all, that we're not going to sit still here in New Bethlehem. We're going to continue to try to make life better for each of us. We want you to live as long as you possibly can and have no surprises. All right? Amen. All right. That was my last announcement for you. I think I've covered them all. I'll be back with you soon. Now we will have a A and B selection from our choir.
like this. Oh, after a while. Hey, no more Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. No more Thursday party. Say, good every day. Somebody said Monday. What about Tuesday? And rejoice in it. After a while. Amen. Well, before I get to the scripture, I said I was going to come back because I left some stuff on my desk. I have a dedication certificate here for Charlie Camille Tucker, family in the house. You, of course you'll get it. I knew you were going to come up. You can't hide back there in the back. Also, Raylan Serenity Frazier. Come on. Oh, we do still do baby dedications. Sometimes they're just private affairs. And the family come out, and we still give them back unto the Lord. Now, I'm going to get you out of here as quickly as possible because I know some of you got reservations at restaurants to uh, take mothers out, which never happens to fathers, but that's okay. <laughs> you can't get in a restaurant on Mother's Day, but you can go anytime you want to on Father's Day. All right. <laughs> amen, amen. Well, Father, we come now asking for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We ask now, oh Lord, that you just allow it to fall afresh upon us. Lead, guide, and direct us. Speak to me and speak through me as I stand to proclaim your word this day. Because this is the Mother's Day, and all mothers should be honored. This we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning's scripture is not the traditional scripture that we normally do. If you went to Proverbs, you're in the wrong place. Okay, we went to 2 Timothy today. 2 Timothy chapter 1, starting at verse 2. To Timothy, my be dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve for my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembered remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the 
unfringed faith that is in, the, in thee, which dealt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in these also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gifts of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Amen. You may be seated. I think it's time for us to move past the virtuous mother or the virtuous woman, which we normally do. And one of the reasons I did not select that one because I have talked about the virtuous woman for at least five times this year already as we were doing, uh, sending some mothers home to be with the master. And they were all virtuous women. But now we're going to move to the younger generation. We're going to talk about the influence of mothers. In 2 Timothy, Paul talked about the grandmother and the mother that instill godly principles into Timothy, who Paul called his son in the ministry. We know that the importance of mothers. We know that it takes the mothers to, to help instill into the children the word of God. But the Bible tells us about many mothers and their influences in the children. Some mothers were positive influence, and some were negative influence. As we look through the Bible, we can take into account or into recognition Rebecca, Jacob, and Esau. It was a mother that was considered to have both positive and negative influence on her children. You know the story. Esau had returned from a day of hunting and, and was famished, and he took and was exhausted, and he took and uh, was giving up his uh, inheritance for some soup. But then the, the mother convinced them to uh, take and steal the blessings of his brother. So Esau took and acted like he was Jacob in order to get the blessings from the father. But it was the mother that at that for, at that pushed him in the direction to do that. So we find that we have mothers that are positive and we have mothers that are negative. Naomi was one who loved her son's wife so much that she was a positive influence on him. And then we come to the one that is listed in our scripture as we're talking today. We find it mentioned in the first, the first woman named Lois. She had a daughter and her name was Eunice. And Eunice had a son that was named Timothy. And these, this was the mother's influence or inspiration on a child. See, I was a great influence, so great that God chose to have Paul mention Lois and Eunice in the scripture as he wrote his text. Now, let me, I'm going to stop right there because I, I, I don't want this to, I don't want to get this confused with grandmothers. There is Eunice Lois is the only grandmother, or the word grandmother is the only term that is used only one time in the entire Bible, and it is used for Lois. That's my teaching point of the day. Every sermon must have a teaching point. So I want you to know that grandmothers are recognized, however, they are not identified only in the Bible with Lois. They now, their, their influence was great on Timothy because in their presence, there were some situations that was going on. Timothy mother Eunice was lived in Leicester, and she was what was uh, to what we know now as Turkey. But the interesting part of this story is that Eunice was married to a Greek, and the term Greek in this case was identifying that the husband, her husband, was a non-Christian. Eunice got her Christianity because she was taught by the mother. We have three generations of teaching. The mother of Eunice took, Lois took and taught her daughter, and her daughter taught her son, and her son was selected by Paul to be one of the first to carry the word to the gospel church. When you talk about the, uh, the husband being Greek, as in the Bible, he tells us that he was an unsaved person. He did not believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. So now we find that there's a difficult time going on in Eunice because Eunice had to raise up her son in a house that was split in belief. It took a strong mother to take and hold that family together. 
says, now, now here you had to, to understand that, that the unbeliever is the head of the house, but yet here's the woman of the house that wanted to ensure that her son knew our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Despite the difficult circumstances, Eunice raised Timothy in a Christian with Christian values. And the idea here is that mothers, you got to learn how to hold your household together. So how can you do that? He said, first of all, you can't compromise. If you know Jesus the Christ and, and your, your spouse, be it male, be the mother or father, that is unsaved, said so you got to learn how not to compromise. You got to hold on to your faith. You got to let them see Jesus in you. You got to continue to keep the household of faith with you. You got to show the love that is in you that you believe in Jesus the Christ. And we got biblical scriptures to hold on to in this. I know you all are quiet out there. I'm not going to make anybody unhappy here. I mean, I'm not trying to break up a house because the Bible tells us even though you might be married to somebody that don't believe, even if that is the case, says that you are not to let them to leave. If they want to go, you let them go. But if they want to stay, you let them stay because it is because of your Christianity, because of your belief in Jesus the Christ, then you might have the influence on them that they may see the Jesus in you and come to Jesus on their own. In fact, in Corinthians chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it says that, uh, and the woman which has a husband that believeth not, and if he please to dwell with her, let her not leave him. You need to stay. He said, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children unclean, but now they are holy. So once you, 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 even though you got into this relationship and it is a, a split household, the word of God says you stay there. Now, if the one, the unbeliever wants to leave, see ya. But if you want to stay, you keep them there because you, what you believe and what you have in you might just save them and cause them to come to the Lord. It says that, but if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. And brother or sister is not under bondage in, in such a case, but God has called us to peace. If you are in a household, mother, if you have a household that is split in faith, you need to hold on to what God has laid out for you. But once you understand that if what is going on does not keep this household safe, then you got to let it go. If they want to leave, let them go. Don't hold on to it because it says that you're only going to create problems in your house. And you as mother need to be the one that is going to hold your house together. See, what you do is that not only do you let them go, but you got to let each one of them, you got to let the unbeliever see Jesus in you. You got to let your children see that you have Christ in you, that you are Christ-like, because if you're going to grow a chain of your child under the admonition of the Lord and allow them to know that God is able to take care of them, that means that you are going to be the example for them. And so you cannot destroy the household, but if the house wants to leave, if one of you wants to go, let it go. But you as the believer are not the one to leave, but it's the unbeliever that is need to make that decision to go. You hold your family together. We don't, you hold it together because God decided in his divine promise that he wanted the household family to stay together. He tells you that right there in verse 13, which I read before. And the woman which has a husband that believeth not, and if he pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. In other words, you need to hold your house together. You need to be the good example. See, when you start, he said, one, you got to do, you got to pray for your husband. You got to pray for your children. And then you, you got to take a, 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 and be the one that, that preserves your family. And mother, you can be the strong influence on how and what the situation are going to be in your house because you are the leader. He might be the head, but you are the leader of the household. And you need to be the one that holds it together. You got to show that which is good and acceptable in the, the word of God. See, once you start doing that, see, God said, when you go out there and you become the example and you are laying the scriptures on them, he says that you need to understand what is listed in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. 
says that all scriptures are given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. In other words, that when you give them the word of God, it will cause some corrections to go on in your house. You've got to be the leader in your house. So now it goes on and tells you that, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. It's prob probably the most uh, definitive verse in the whole Bible. You've got to hold your family together. Now, I, I'm not talking about the men today, you know. The men come to church every now and then. Look around. There are more, all the women in the house, but yet you don't find the men. So if the word of God is going to get to your children, where do you think it's most likely going to come from? I, I know the men don't like that, but that's okay. I'm going to state the fact the way that it is. See, Paul talks about scriptures in, in, in verse 14. In verse 14, he was telling us that, but continue through in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. In other words, because of the work that Lois and Eunice did with Timothy, he was able to go and Paul was able to use him to establish churches. One of the things you got to understand is that even though t uh, Timothy became a Christian, he was raised up as a Jew. In fact, Paul tells us, if you get into the scriptures, that he had to go back and circumcise Timothy because the, church, the, the Jewish people would not accept him because he was not circumcised and because he was raised up as a non-Christian. He was raised up not knowing the Lord, but he knew Jesus the Christ through his mother and his father. You've got to be the one that stands out, stand out and let the world know that my children, just like the certificates that we gave out here this morning, we took and so gave them back unto the Lord as Hannah had done with her son. And we gave them back and under that we took an oath to say that we're going to raise them under the admonition of the Lord. We're going to be in this household and we're going to teach them the way of God. We're going to be a good example for them. We're going to let them know that we have a Lord that is able. We're going to grow them up so that when they go out they will not depart. See, you've got to instill the word word of God into it and it was not the, 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 the choice of the mother or the father to bring the child but they came together whether they be uh, uh, equally yoked or unequally yoked or believing and unbelieving but they had enough sense to know that God is able to take care of them and that the child is a gift unto you. You might be the mother, but God gave that child to you and now he said I want you to take and raise that child so that he will know me and that, that while they are growing up, that, that you continue to be the example. But not only the mother and the father, but we took the grandmother, the aunts, the uncles, and everybody else and had them stand and say, yes, I agree that I'm going to be an example. If I got to stand in the gap for the mother and father, I'm going to be there for them. See, you need to know that no matter whether you have a child or not, you are still an example to that child, and you might be the mother figure for that child to allow them them to know the word of God see when you when you become a mother just because you gave birth to the child does not necessarily mean that you are the mother of that child sometimes the grandparent takes over sometime an aunt might take over and believe it or not that might be a father a grandfather or an uncle that got to stand in the gap there also just because you did not give birth does not mean that you're not a mother figure See, you need to know that being a mother is one that is going to let you know that you got to be there to give an example. See, see, when you come to the examples of children, you've got to be standing out. One of the things that was stood out about Timothy when Paul came to him, he says that he already knew. Even though he was in a house that did not know the Lord, the father didn't know, but he already knew the Lord. Acts chapter 16, you can read all about it. But you see, once you understand, you've got to stand boldly before the Lord and give an account for what you did. Because one of the things that we normally do, but we haven't done it here in the church, the whole church would have stood up.
And the child would have been presented to the church and asked the church to stand boldly and agree to help the family with this child. We, we, even though we had a private ceremony, we still held them up to those that were here. See, when, when we do that, we are saying that we are going to allow this child to grow up knowing that Jesus is able knowing that Jesus is the one that died for us. See, you, you can go and, and make an influence in the child. You can witness with the child in his life. You can let the child know that Jesus is in them. And then when they grow up, they got to make a decision for themselves. You know, one of the things that I always tell the family, whether they are, are, are both Christians or one Christian, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not dealing with the family but dealing with the child. So at one point, at some point in their life, they're going to have to make a decision for themselves. You train them up, and then they will make the decision based on what they know and what they have seen in you. You are the mother. You are the example. So let the children see the church, see you in church and attendance. It is important that they see you because what they see is what they're going to do. If you don't come to church, they ain't coming. <laughs> if you don't show up in Bible study, they're not coming. The example that you set is going to change and correct and, and mold the, 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 the life of that child. See, don't just be in church on Sunday looking for a babysitter. See, we used to have children's church. You need to come and teach them on how to act in the church. Grow them up in the church. Let them know how things are done in the church and then establish a relationship with the master. I know you all don't like this type of sermon, but this is, this is something we're going we to do in New Bethlehem Baptist Church. We're going to get our children back. We're going to get them back into the church. We're going to be the example for them. And because one thing that we have here and we know and we believe is that God sent his only begotten son. He said that, that they called his name Jesus. And that because of that, he came to love us. He hung, bled, and died for us. He is our Savior. And because he lives, we can get up and dress up on a sun, uh, uh, the Sunday, Sunday morning on Mother's Day and come out. And some of us coming to visit our mothers because of what our mothers did for them in the past. And because of that, we can go forth and let the world know that my mother stood beside me. My mother was an example unto me. I can look back that I may not have understood or agreed with everything that she did, but now that I've gotten old, I've grown up and I can see that what she did for me was what I needed. I may not have seen it then. I was mad and unhappy about all the things that she made me to do, but one thing I know right now is that she took and gave me everything that I needed in order to stand boldly out there into the world. I grew up knowing the Lord was there and when I got myself in trouble out there I remember the words of my mother says that God is able if you just hold on to his fan hold on to his unchanging hand you might have been falling down and didn't know how to get up but there was somebody that came down from on high lifted you up put your feet back on a solid foundation and brought back to your remembrance the thing that the Lord that your mother had taught you Say, so, look I know that you may not like what, what I'm doing what you, I'm telling you right now but it's for your good because I want you to understand that we got a God that is able to do everything exceedingly abundantly above anything you can imagine when you get yourself in trouble you need to go back to the master call on the name of Jesus in fact, he says you need to fall down on your knees, call say, Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. See, you need to call on the master, call on the Father to help you because the, your parent brought you to church. You confess Jesus with your mouth. You were endowed with the Holy Spirit. When you got yourself in trouble and didn't know what to ask for, he says that the Spirit took your moans and your groans and he took it and left them up to the one who sits on the right hand of the Father. And the Father, the one that's sitting there, took it, gave it over to the Father, said this is 
one you put in my hand. So I want you to hear that cry. See, mother, you are responsible for your child. You are responsible for allowing them to see that which is good. Allow them to see that which is right. That which is going to sustain them in the time of trouble. See, a lot of us don't know some of the things that our children go through, but after a while when they figure out how they got to where they are, they'll pick up the phone one day and they'll call you up and say, thank you. I appreciate you. I love what you did for me. I didn't understand it when you gave it to me, but now I understand what it's all about. And then you can stick and stick your chest out and be proud and say, hallelujah. Because if it was not for the prayers of the righteous, it says they availeth much. If it was not for the prayers of the mothers, if it was not for the prayers of the grandmothers, the prayers of the aunts that was there lifting up them children in the time of trouble covering them with the word of God then and only then will they be able to stand boldly as they get old and be an example unto their own children we got a God that has shown us every opportunity he woke us up this morning he started us on our way but we'll understand all that he was doing for us by and by a mother's influence it is a great influence and I'm not going to keep you all day. I got 15 pages here, but I'm going to leave the rest of it alone. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because I know y'all want to go out. You want to go out to dinner, so we're going to leave you right there. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Come on in the room. Oh, come on. Oh, singing, Jesus is mine. And he right up all of my prescription. And he give me all of my medicine. In the prayer, oh, in the prayer. Come on, clap them hands. Why don't you come on in the room? Oh, come on. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, and he ride up. Oh, and he give me all of my in the prayer room. In the prayer room. Oh, why don't you come on in the room? Oh, come on. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, whatever you need, just know a case of life. 
she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. Oh, my mother prayed. Had me on her mind. Took the time and prayed. Oh, I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. Say, I'm so glad. Come on, somebody think about it. Oh, somebody pray. Had me on their mind. Took the time and prayed. Anybody here glad? I'm so glad. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. One more time. Oh, somebody pray. Pray for me. Oh, they had me on that. Took the time and prayed. Oh, yes, I'm glad. Yes, say I'm so, I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad. One more time from the top. Oh, singing, come on, in the room. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in my darkness. Had he right up all Anybody glad he gave me all of my in the prayer room. Come on and clap your hand and say, it's in the room. It's in the room. Hey, oh, it's in the room. Somebody pray for you. Had you on their mind. Oh, but it's in the room. Hey, in the room. Hey, in the room. Anybody need joy? Anybody need peace? Oh, it's in the room. Come on 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 in the room. Come on, clap your hands. For somebody that prayed for you, was it somebody that greased you up real good with the anointing oil? You wouldn't be here this morning. But lift your hands and tell the Lord, I'm grateful. Come on, somebody, lift your hands and say, Lord, I'm grateful. Oh, I know that prayer will pray. I know prayer will, good Lord, it change things. I, I know that. Y'all saw pretty good. I know that prayer will. As we're getting ready for prayer, just lift your hands and say, Prayer will, oh Lord, it change. Sing with me now. I know that prayer. Oh, prayer will. I know prayer will hear the change thing. Good God, I know that prayer will. I know that prayer will. I know that prayer will. Good Lord, I know it in the church. 
pain. Say one more time. I know that prayer. Come on, sing it like you mean it. I know that prayer will. I know that prayer will. Oh Lord, a chain. Come on, somebody thank God for prayer. I know that prayer. Hey, prayer will. I know that prayer will. Oh Lord, a chain. Come on, just have a I know that. Ooh, I know the change thing. I wouldn't be standing here today if it wasn't for prayer. Anybody got that testimony that prayer will? I know, I know it'll change. When I thought I lost my mind, I know that prayer will. I thought I was going to lose my mind. But somebody lift your hands and say, prayer will. I know prayer will change things. One more time, scream it to the top of your voice. I know that prayer. Yeah. I know prayer will. Oh, it'll change things. Come on, let's take it out. Oh, the prayer will, prayer will say change things, change things. Somebody said prayer will, prayer will change things, change things. Oh, somebody lift your hands and say prayer, prayer will oh, change things. I pray for you and you pray for me. Oh, I know that prayer will. Oh, prayer. Pray in the morning, late at night, and prayer will. Oh, change the hang. and uncles and all those that prayed for our children because if it was not for the prayers of the righteous our children would be lost but Lord right now we just want to say thank you Lord we ask now that you put a, a hedge of protection around about our children right now some are coming out of colleges and getting ready to enter into this cruel world and Lord, we know that we may have instilled all of your virtues in them, but Lord, they're going to have to grow up and experience it for themselves. So Lord, while they are going through, we ask that you just continue to keep your hand on them. Keep them under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And when they depart and fall off the straight and narrow path, we thank you for being a gracious God, a merciful God that allowed them to come back and continue to move in the direction that you'd have them to go. Lord, we have those coming out of high school and getting ready to enter into that secondary, into the college education program to go off into the world all by themselves where they are going to come up against all types of people and influences, Lord. But we want that you to just continue to keep their minds stayed on you. Continue to instill within them to remember that which your mother taught you, the things that your grandmother taught you, the things that your family taught you, that you may survive in this hard, cruel world. And Lord, we pray for those that are in the church today. We know that there are many in the house that may have infirmities within their bodies. But God, we know that you're able. 
that you are the doctor in the sick room, that you are, you are the cure of all diseases. And no matter what the problem might be, Lord, we ask that you to touch them. Touch them with a finger of love and continue to lift them up and give them strength to hang on and see what the end's going to be. Because we know that you are a good God and that you're able. We pray for those that are sick and shut in at their homes. Lord, we, we know that it might be hard to stay home sometimes. But Lord, we know that you are an all-knowing and an everywhere God. Even though they are not in the house with us, but you in, the heart, in their hearts with them. That you can continue to lift them up. You can continue to heal them, give them strength, and put a smile on their face. So Lord, we ask you continue to do that which only you can do. As in the minds and hearts of all of your people. And Lord, we just thank you. But Lord, we want to lift up a special thank you for bringing our musician back. After the accident that he had, Lord, we, we know it was only you that kept him from being hurt worse than what it was. Because if it was not for you with your hand upon him, kept him away from all hurt, harm, and danger. The car was all twisted up, but yet he got out. He went to the hospital and they sent him on home. And Lord, you have raised him up and brought him back to us. And he's sitting here praising you with Zion songs. So glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you and only you. The highest praise. Because only you can do it. Lord, right now, we want to say thank you to the committee that, 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 that acted on our on behalf, church, on the behalf of the church on our May Day activity. They did an excellent job doing only what you could lead them in. We can't take credit for what happened because it was only through you that you made this an, 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 an event that was one for this community to let them know that in this house you still dwell and that this is a light and a beacon that can draw people unto you. So we thank you, Lord, and we, we thank you right now. Lord, we ask for your continued blessing upon this church, that you continue to be there with them, continue to lead, guide, and direct them in all that they do. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I, I know some of you said that I, I miss the call to discipleship. I didn't. I just changed the order. And I did it for a purpose. Because we have many people in the house today. And I can't say that I know who have accepted Christ. But when we finish here. You have the opportunity to accept Christ and then you go on and do what you want to do. I want you to go with the word of God on your heart. The word says that if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that God raised his son from the dead, you shall have salvation. On this day, I know, is there anyone in the house that have not confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior? This is your opportunity to come to Christ. This is about not about being a member of New Bethlehem Baptist Church. This is about you becoming a member of the body of Christ that he may continue to keep you away from all hurt, harm, and danger and continue to protect you that you may grow up and understand what God has for you because without him, you cannot understand him. Will there be one? If not, there may be somebody here that don't know the Lord, don't have a church home. This is about a membership at New Bethlehem Baptist Church or any church of your choice that you can come and fellowship, exercise your gifts and your talents for the uplifting of the kingdom of God. Give back to him that which he's given unto you. This is your opportunity. If not, the invitation has been given. And now we're going to have our benediction. Mothers, happy Mother's Day. Grandmothers, happy Mother's Day. Mothers, happy Mother's Day. As you go out to your dinners and to your place of where you're going to celebrate this day, we ask that you carry the word of God with you, knowing that God is able. Not only that, but that you are an influence unto your children and unto your children's children and to each generation thereafter. Go out and let them know that you still love them and that you appreciate them and that God is still in their heart. By the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And let the church say amen. Amen. Go in peace. I know that prayer, prayer will, prayer will, will change things. Good God Almighty, I know that prayer. Call him in the morning. Call him in the midnight hour. Yeah, it'll change things. Yeah, I know that prayer. 
you're drinking your tears from water. Prayer will. I know prayer will change things. Good God Almighty, I know the prayer. Hey, I'm glad that prayer will. Oh, change things. One more time, lift your voice and say, prayer will. 